morning, everybody. Call the meeting of the uh, board of directors together. Uh, roll call. Mr. Chairman. Mark Finkel. Here. Thomas Stover. Here. Albert Hayes. Here. David Bergstress. Here. Michael Clark. Here. Robert Leslie. Here. Robert Fulton. Here. John Hodgson. Here. Richard Ferrar. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, motion to adopt or revise the meeting agenda. We do have a revision. Uh, we are moving item 9A to after an executive session, which uh, again is a change and revision to the uh, uh, schedule that we're going to need in the executive session. I make a motion to revise the meeting agenda. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Approved. Uh, introduction of guests. Uh, I'm sorry. I don't know. <laughs> That was, that was good. Mike, I'm representative myself. myself. <laughs> the, the representative from, uh, I apologize. I'm oh, sorry. No, problem. no, I wouldn't. Um, I'm just introducing guests. Uh, Mr. Mark Finkel. Here. Mr. Michael Clark. Here. Mr. Albert Hayes. Here. Mr. Robert Fulton. Here. Mr. Michael Clark. Here. Mr. Albert Hayes. Here. Mr. Albert Hayes. Here. Mr. Michael Clark. 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 Here. Mr. Albert Hayes. Here. Mr. I'd like to, we'd like to have Kleinschmidt's uh, presentation of the Hawkinsville remediation and removal. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, everybody. Uh, my name is Mike Schimpf. I'm uh, with Kleinschmidt Associates. I'm a principal in charge of this project, uh, which is the Hawkinsville Dam um, project. Sure. I'll try to run through this. Um, is there any questions or some uh, terminology that you don't understand? Please let me know. And I'll try to. Uh, um, today we're going to talk about uh, the presentation that we have, what our objectives were for this analysis, um, what we did with the analysis. Um, we looked at two options because the dam was either in poor condition, it was said to either remove it or repair it. And we've done a detailed analysis of these two options. We'll talk about the removal plan and we'll talk about the remediation plan talk about the effects that each one of those plans has, what permits are required, um, try to lay out the various um, matrix of decisions that can be, uh, be used to decide which options you go for, and then talk about what the next steps are in the analysis. Um, as I said, we were hired to evaluate uh, two alternatives, removal of the market for them, or repairing to bring it with the DEC, the New York um, DEC, to bring in compliance. Um, and a little bit hard to see, which I apologize for in the red, but um, when we started the project, it was rated as a Class B dam um, and a significant hazard of the fail. Class B dam requires that the dam be able to pass 150% of the 100 year flood, which is around 21,000 CFS. Um, Quite a lot of water. The 100 year flood is 14,300 CFS. Um, previous studies that were done proposed two options either remove it, again, or repair it. And, uh, and the various uh, configurations on how to uh, repair it. So we started off with, on that basis. Um, the first step in our analysis was to do a detailed hydro hydrologic and hydraulic analysis of the river using the accepted methodology, which is the Army Corps uh, program called HECRAS. Um, that's what the state accepts for the uh, hydraulic analysis. Um, found a couple of things in the analysis that the proximity of the Hawkinsville Road Bridge to the Hawkinsville Dam causes a backwater effect. Water, trying to jam all that water from the dam to the opening of the bridge causes it to back up, the water levels back up um, during high flows. Previous analyses um, did not account for that backwater effect or the channel contractions um, that the bridge caused. There are a couple pictures here just to show you know, what it looks like and the distance between the dam and the, and the bridge. It's only 270 feet wide. Um, I mentioned backwater um, from the, uh, the bridge downstream. Is an important consideration. These two pictures um, 
kind of illustrate what we found out with the dam. Um, on the left, normal flow conditions, uh, water coming over the dam, it's very obvious that there's a dam there. The picture on the right was taken this April during a high flow condition. You can see how hot the black water, the tail water of the dam became, and that was only seven or 8,000 CFS. Uh, we have to pass 21,000 CFS, which is the requirement. It makes the dam basically go away. Um, it's a key, key, key factor in this uh, project. Um, when the tailwater impacts the dam and it floods it out, basically, it removes it from the river. Um, it has no backwater or effect the dam. It reduces the impact if it fails. Um, this was a key, uh, key component. And when we did a breach analysis for the project at the flood conditions, we came up that there's uh, basically no impact if the dam failed. You won't even know it's there. Um, we prepared an analysis of the results um, and a request to reclassify the dam. We sent that into the New York State BBC and received concurrence to that in April of this year and reduced the dam from the Class B significant hazard to a Class A um, low hazard dam. This was a, uh, what we call it a game changer in the analysis because the dam now only has to pass 14,000 CFS um, in the remediation, which is, a, which is a, huge, a huge number. And typically, a lot of these old dams um, that were built back when this was built were designed to around 100 year flood. That was about the, the design plan. So, that was a big component and a, and a big change in the project. Um, we'll get a little bit more on that in a bit. We also then looked at the physical characteristics of the dam, because that's important. Oops. I don't want to know. Yeah. Um, the physical characteristics of the dam, we looked at the stability analysis, because if the dam is um, not stable, we'd have to do something to remediate the dam with that regard. I mean, that's either add concrete to it, um, or a rock bolt, you know, drill into the rock and, and actually bolt it down so it doesn't overturn the bed. Um, we looked at the phase safety factors and the stability analysis. And for normal pond, the design flood, earthquake, um, and all is very fine. The stability is no issue. The ice load, however, um, <coughs> was not stable. But we're, uh, the damage was stood many years of having ice on it. Um, the numerical analysis used for the ice loading calculations makes some assumptions that we don't really think are valid and we have no way to prove them. You know, like, uh, how well is the concrete attached to the rock? Um, let's record it and, and do a lot of studies. But by virtue of the fact that the dam has stood the ice up there you know, where it is, um, that uh, the dam is probably fine in that case. And our recommendation is to go to the DPC and request a variance. And otherwise, the dam is still away and the dam is um, As I said, for the existing conditions, the, uh, the change in the spillway design for the SDF was a game changer. We reduced it, brought the flows way down from 21,000 to 14,000. And for the 100-year flood, we predicted that a flood level would be at 1,049.4 feet. Um, regrettably, um, that overtops the embankments um, of the dam by several feet. Um, this is the embankment on the right side looking downstream. And this is a picture of the embankment during that April high water event. And you can see water flowing over the embankments at 7, 8,000 CFS. Um, so even with the reduced hazard classification, the dam did not meet the DPC criteria, which is it must pass the 100-year flood and still have a foot of freeboard. That's one foot below the top of the dam, so it's not going to overtop. Um, and that's what we needed to, that's what we're shooting for. Um, so remediation or removal is still needed, and we looked at, uh, obviously, removal 
option is still the same, but the mediation had a much different um, <coughs> goal or, or end game with the uh, lower floor plan. So for dam removal, we looked at removing the entire length of the spillway. Um, we do that in two phases. The first phase would be to breach the spillway. Um, accessing the left abutment, and that's the left abutment the downstream to draw the impoundment down. It's basically create a small hole in the dam, let the water out of the impoundment. And once it was down, go to the other side of the river and remove um, the dam. Um, and remove the spillway concrete retreating across to the river right. This is a drawing of the dam, and um, here is the gate structure that is part of the dam. This is where we remove that to allow all the water to go through there. Draw the impoundment down. Once it was the water was gone, we would conquer dam or sandbag off this portion of the spillway and then come out in the river with an excavator and slowly just retreat back, removing as we go back to the other side of the river and access. Um, we did a detailed opinion of cost for how much this effort was going to take. Um, considering you know, all the labor material, amount of materials that need to be done, would be used for this project, the time frame. The probably single biggest cost in this option is disposal of the economy. We called up a local uh, Ask them what their cost would be for disposal of this concrete and um, <coughs> put that in our estimate and came up with a number of $893,000 to remove the dam. Um, this is just an artist's rendering of what the dam would look like uh, once it was removed. And it fooled me the first time I looked at it. The dam is back here. <coughs> on the left, the dam is in place, and the picture on the right, the dam is gone. Okay. So, there's something to uh, a little rendering there. But. <coughs> okay, we, we um, but the other option, the mediation, the dam has to pass the 100 year flood with one foot of freeboard. And the freeboard is on the embankment, so it has to be one foot below the top of the embankments. The remediation of spillway would reduce the peak flood elevation to 1,049, as we mentioned. Um, and so, what we did for that, we had again two phases for construction. One, we wanted to remove and replace the existing outlet structure with the new gate. The existing outlet structure that's there doesn't work. It's blocked up, it's plugged with concrete, um, and the operator isn't, well, just doesn't work. Um, we're going to repair that. One of the requirements for the dam is it has to have a low level outlet. So you can drain the pond if you need to, you need to do anything to it. Um, we also needed to enlarge the spillway or lengthen the spillway to allow it to have sufficient capacity to pass the 100 year flood and provide the free board. Came up, we needed 20 feet more spillway than what exists there today. Um, the third thing we needed to do was to raise the left abutment. And that is, again, the left abutment. We're looking upstream now, on the opposite side of the gate structure. We need to raise that. Actually, it's the left abutment. The gate side. We need to raise. Everything has to be raised to 1050. Get mixed up which way face um, the left abutment, which is um, not that big a deal. And then phase two construction would be to raise the right embankment, which we saw in the previous picture of the water flowing over the elevation 1050, which is our one foot three foot. Um, we would then ultimately stabilize the embankment and restore the area of the seedings and panties and make it just all spit with the end. So in this picture here, again, left. Over here we have the gate removal. Um, 
remove that and while we're there, um, we want to rebuild the spillway 20 feet, which is the gray area here. I know it's hard to see in this picture. And it wasn't shaped so bad. It was better. Um, but inside that, in this abutment wall, which runs parallel with the river, we're going to install the gate structure because we've got, already got it dug up. Install the gate structure, run a pipe, work a diameter pipe right around it, connect to the gate, and um, utilize the existing space that we have in that bank. And the gate will be built in to the river. And we have that 20 feet of space. We have the low level outlet. And we think that's a great economy because it's already dug up and only been it once. On this side over here, we would fix that, regrade the embankment, tying it back to the shortest length to get back to the 1,050 elevation. It's basically existing embankment right now. We would regrade that and raise it to the proper elevation. Um, we did a cost for that as well. Uh, we have uh, regional prices and cost indices. We talked to some vendors for quotes like the gates and for a pipe. and came up with a price of $694,000 for that option. Um, construction season for this work will probably be in the order of about two months. options, of course, is um, the effects on the natural resources. Um, dam removal, you have to consider what happens when the impoundment goes down, what's the stability of the bank of the impoundment, which is oh, a little over a mile long. Um, take away the water, is the bank going to slough in, or is it, are things going to happen? What about the water quality the sediment? Because the impoundment does accumulate sediment over time. And we've done some estimates on how much sediment is actually in the impoundment and have to be removed and disposed of. Um, the sediment has to be tested for uh, chemical content. I think at this point we think it's clean. There's not a whole lot of industrial development upstream. But we still have to do a sample and prove that it's, it's, it's good, it's clean, that we could use it on site or use it somewhere else or haul it away to a good disposal site. Um, there will be impacts to fisheries and wildlife. Um, the stream is a trout stream, classified as a trout stream. Um, removal <coughs> does have some benefits to the trout fishery, but it impacts the impoundment fishery. So there are pros and cons to um, most things. Um, wildlife, if they're nesting ducks and birds in the impoundment, it would be an impoundment. So it's again, plus or minus. And then, of course, the impact of weapons. We create some weapons with removal, or with the dam in place, there is no weapons because nothing's changed. So there are some considerations there. Um, with water flowing over the abutment as it does now, there is a little bit of wetlands created just by that fact. And that's something that we have to deal with um, if that option is the end Another one item we had to check out was cultural resources. Um, the dance been there for a long time is it had about cultural uh, significance. Um, we did a survey of the area and found that there were, was no historical significance to the dam. Um, it wasn't uh, colonial or uh, no Indians camped out there. That's the correct terminology. Um, in some instances, we have found that, but problems. and no subsurface cultural resources that would require um, you go to a phase, you know, a detailed cultural review. Um, look at socioeconomic impacts. You know, what is the aesthetics? So you've got rendering. What's it going to look like with no dam? What's it going to be, be like? Um, it's been an impoundment for numbers of years. What's it going to look like without an impoundment? Um, what infrastructure is going to be left or removed because of the impact on the existing infrastructure? Are there other animals um, coming into the impoundment that would be covered and cause problems? Um, what is the impact to recreation? Obviously, if you have no impoundment, you might 
have the voting on Tom Water. Um, but if you remove the dam, there's some potential for white water ramping. Voting. Um, the impact of fishing, we talked about that. The trout stream is uh, might improve the trout fishing a little bit. It removes another option for fishing as well. Then the issue of public safety. Um, the dam gone. Maybe not that much danger to public safety. But when you get in there, having more people might be in the river with the rafting, which might be a danger. Um, anyway, pros and cons. Permits to do this work, there are a lot of permits that we require for the removal. Um, one, the local floodplain would change, to remove the dam, and lower the flood levels upstream. That would have we require a modification of the town, communities in the FEMA flood insurance program. Um, the state has a number of uh, permits that are required um, to remove the dam, make sure that there's no more, there would be no more impact. So uh, whatever's left there uh, cause any impacts. <coughs> Freshwater wetland permit, wild and scenic recreational river act permit, um, federal permits, moral coordination bill permit, and a number of permits that we have to apply to uh, begin construction. We plan to begin that work, obtain the permits, and be ready to go um, for construction after the spring runoff. Remediation again, we do have local floodplain permits. We do have a lot of the same permits, um, just not as many. Um, and then ultimately, we'd have to confirm with the flood level and uh, not increase. There's no changes in the files, letters, and uh, elevation certificates. There's a, a decision matrix, and these are some of the uh, questions that we have. We have removal pros and cons, and we have remediation pros and cons. Um, both comply with the regulations. Um, removal does restore fish passage that previously would have been divided in. It is a migrating population of fish. Um, habitat diversity restores it to a riverine environment. Reduces flooding upstream. We're not going to, to lower the water for a short distance until it returns back to the river elevations upstream. It does improve opportunities for whitewater boating and removes some of the public safety concerns. Um, on the negative side, you have sediment management, some bank stability problems, loss of empowerment recreation. <coughs> may affect stormwater outfalls, as I mentioned. Uh, you have collections of rainwater and stormwater into the river. It could impact uh, residents along the impoundment that have wells because you've got a recharge from the, uh, the impoundment that now is occurring. Um, you have more regulatory provisions required and ultimately there's a higher cost in that option. Remediation, very much the same thing. You have a lot of regulations you have to deal with. Um, the Class A designation reduces your ongoing regulatory requirements once the dam is brought back up to speed. There's no, there's no sediment management issues. It would be more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, or actually, we have a more pleasing dam structure than the one that's there now. That doesn't look very, very good. Um, we would use flooding on Edmonds Road near the bridge because we have the control with the uh, water going around the ends. Um, at a lower cost. Negatively, uh, we don't have the fish passage item. Um, I don't know how significant that is, but that's a test that might be required. Electro fishing, do some kind of collection just to see if that is it even an issue. Um, we do have some highly higher flood elevations upstream. There are public safety concerns around the dam. If uh, that's something has to be monitored and watched. Um, it does present future life cycle costs. The dam has to be maintained in the future. It's an ongoing issue, hopefully, that uh, we'll use the 
repairs will be something in the many years in the future. And you do have an operational maintenance mm -hmm. cost to the dam. So here we are, next steps. Um, one, um, decide which alternative you want to um, want to go with. And with that, we would begin phase two, which would be the ultimate final design. Prepare our construction documents, business specifications, um, obtain the required permits, and work with the district to obtain a contractor and start hopefully start construction um, with either option. Um, next summer. Um, first of all, uh, we have 15 copies of his complete report. If anybody wants them, uh, we can either do that after he's done talking um, uh, or, after the or, or after the meeting. If like something you want to say for the meeting. Uh, any questions? For go ahead. Quite large spills over the top and all the way still away. With respect to mediation, is there any thoughts to uh that plan of the naked bottom? No, it's not it's not, not possible with the way the event's constructed. And to be honest with you, once the flood, because I mentioned the tailwater, which is the downstream water level, comes up so high, that reduces the discharge capacity of the dam. So we have to, you know, with you. Yeah, but you have no driving force pushing water underneath it. It's all just a couple of What about if you, I know this is difficult, Well, we did yeah, two. One is remediation was what six hundred ninety thousand dollars, and the removal was almost nine hundred thousand. Well, we're not replacing it; we're just going to fix it. So that's replacement. No, I mean, and that was part of the uh, original concept: was review the structure, check it for stability. It's in good shape that way. It just needs some body work. Here. It would be millions of dollars to replace it. Because first you have to remove it or, or build something downstream or do something there. Uh, one and a half times the remediation. Again, disposal of the material is one of the bigger costs. in the picture. You had to look you had to look beyond it. The dam is here. Yeah. Backs up water and that flows that on high flows, but 
on the other side of the bridge, down Sing side of the bridge, you mean there's a difference in elevation between one side of the bridge and the other side of the bridge and at high water? There's a hydraulic trap radiant and through just from the pillars? Through the bridge that trying to jam all that water underneath that bridge. Okay. And so with the dam out, that's going to make a difference? Well, there, guess, the, river, the river will be just as high in Hawkinsville with the dam or without the dam? Downstream mm -hmm. of no. the dam will have to change. Right. Yes. It won't. It, it will be the same high water. Yes. Upstream, upstream, will upstream will be the same because there's only so much water that comes down through that. The dam only backs up so much water. How far did your survey say the backup? From the dam goes back up the river. Um, the pound is about a mile, three miles. Okay, but that that impoundment area a wedge. has always accommodated the overflow from the river. Yes. Mm -hmm. So by taking the dam out or leaving or remedying it wouldn't make any difference because you're going to get the same amount of water on a high high river as with the dam or without the dam. That's not going to change. We take the dam out. Um, obviously, in this picture at high flow, you can see the tailwater coming up here. OK, I'm, I'm basing my theory on I, I lived upriver for over 25 years. Yeah. And high water is always the same every year. Upriver, up as, as you go further and further upstream, the impact of the dam diminishes. Right, I, I understand that. But there's still the same amount of water going down that river. That's true. Mm -hmm. And mine through my Depends area on. or over the dam. So oh, if you take man. the dam out, the dam doesn't back up that much. So you're not reducing the flood the levels upstream. That area. I agree with you. Upstream okay. a certain amount of distance. Okay, I got you. Okay, I got my point. Okay. Um, would there be if you took the dam out or remedied it, would it be any effect to the homeowners? On the right hand side off from Milk uh, Road. Would it the right hand side on the looking downstream? Looking downstream mm -hmm. on the right hand side, there's a few homes right there by the dam. Would it affect them with the extra height put on the dam that you want to do? Well, no, right now um, mm -hmm. you have water flowing over the buckets like you have all coming through here. Yes. And we're going to contain that by raising that embankment all the way around to keep it from coming over. Into they're the not. Area. They're not changing the, the height of the dam. Just the yep, embankments the on the side. Yeah, but you're changing. Would that affect the uh, homeowners sure. along that it side? Actually, actually help them. <clears throat> okay. Okay. That's that's my point. Um, Any other questions for? Yes. I can't hear the question or the answer. Did you just a little she louder? Said, uh, one of the might affect drinking wells. Oh, okay.
knew that there were um, houses along there that had so old wells. So did, in your studies, discover that there were a number of residences that rely on the water, water, bathing, toilet, showers, and No. Uh, we did not go into that. Well, I think the board ultimately makes that decision. You know, the, the gentleman from Kleinschmidt here is presenting the alternatives, um, and not the least of which are the not the least of which are the cost comparisons um, that are going to be borne by uh, uh, those assessed in the Black River area. Um, and like he was saying, that I, I don't mean to jump in on this. Okay. But, um, that, the, the cost to remove that dam presently as it's estimated in the, the opinion of cost is about a third higher than um, than the cost to remediate so I think you should take note of that and, and, and that's certainly going to factor into the board's decision I would don't think I'm speaking out of turn for the board not at all um, I, I didn't hear. And the dam is 10 feet high. Okay. You have to speak up. So yeah. Yeah. And you said something about that you need um, 1,050 feet for so that, you know, with the free board or the flood stage level. Elevation wise, not go up 1,000 feet. Right. What is the current elevation level? The, the spillway crest is around 1,044. And um, there are places in this embankment that you can see in this picture less than that, that are only um, 1,045, 46 that you know, have eroded because of overtopping. And um, yes, left unchecked, it'll eventually be gone anyway. Um, that, that's the, I guess that's the crux of the issue is that it's falling apart. Continue. Eventually, that embankment will breach, you know, break through. The river will go through it, and it's natural every year. A little bit more will go, a little bit more will go, and you know, not have to make it. Don't make it. So, the objective is to make it safe and secure for the future. Um, Any other questions? Uh, question. no. You're all set? Yes, sir. Yes. I live a, my name's Norbert Schroeder. I live in You're saying that if they take the dam out, there's going to be the same amount of water upstream as there was either way? No, I, I guess it's good. Understand, understand the impoundment's a mile long. Right. Right? At the dam's the greatest impact, obviously, because the dam is right there. As you move upstream, it's like a wedge, a triangle, and it diminishes, diminishes, diminishes until you reach a point where it's just river again. That's where it's going to be. And so that would change very little. little. Going down to instead of river. That will be, uh, I would say it's a bug hole. All them stones and stuff that's in there. It will be low, but, um, you know, if it changes at the dam by five feet, maybe it changes, and this is hypothetically, uh, if it changes at the dam by five feet because you took the dam out, or eight feet during normal summertime, once you get upstream, a mile will be what it was. And you're going to take the beauty. On the dam or the river out by taking the dam. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just no. no I'm just saying. If they if they take the dam out, they spend a hundred years in the street. Well, and again, there are two options: either replace it, fix it, or right. move. And I, I, I the drivers the state. Yeah. Okay. 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 Velocity and the dam is a natural settlement increase. We would move that 
and some other places. And, and restore the but what about within the rest of the impoundment? Once the impoundment was down, one of the objectives would be to replant and make it, I mean, not just let it go, we'd have to stabilize the embankments and, and plantings and uh, look into that, whether it's um, willows with natural plantings, and I'm not the environmental guy. But that would be that would have to be done as part of the process. Yes, it have to be restored and stabilized. You just can't let it take the dam out. Just let it go. You got a question in the back? I think we can go around that today. I'm having trouble hearing. I think we can go around today, but we can still do it. I don't know what to probably do. We're, we're probably not going to have a final vote today in case but that's the protocol. We probably, um, we're going to discuss it in our executive session. And um, I don't know, I'm one person on the board, but I, but I think we can discuss it. What? We can follow up. Discuss it out in, in yeah, we can public discuss session. It. We'll discuss we're it. Gonna, we're gonna, there's yeah. a lot to, lot for us to swallow right now. And we're just seeing this ourselves. Over here. Yeah. Plan. Yes. I've had experience in some dam construction. Chipper, yeah. here, home. He was Baker, out of Maryland. Brazil, out of Brazil, all night. Yeah. And um, the valve, is that being utilized today? No. It's, it's, it's inoperable. It's required by the state to have a, a low-level outlet in the dam. Can we build a sluice around it? It's not a low-level outlet. So you go back to running the water underneath the dam. The, 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 the valve would only be used during uh, maintenance conditions or, or something. Otherwise, it would not be open. The water would just go over the spillway like it does now. And I guess. Bob, or you guys can talk about the operation, but it's sure. only going to be there to lower the impoundment. If something happened and the dam needed to be lowered, the impoundment, you can open that valve and, and lower the impoundment below the crest of the spill. Bobby, that's a new Well, the current structure is completely deteriorated. The, the current date structure is completely deteriorated. It's sealed off. It doesn't function. Uh, we haven't used it. I, well, actually, I don't think I've used it in the 15 years I've been with the district, but the, the Department of Environmental Conservation, the dam safety regulations require that all dam structures in New York State have a low-level outlet in order to re relieve and remove the water upstream of the structure in the case of an emergency or, uh, you know, need for emergency repairs. And uh, it also has to function uh, in, in a way that it depletes the water upstream in a certain period of time. So that's a requirement. Um, it'll be there for us to use if we want to take a little bit of the height of the water off of some of the larger storm events, uh, because it will have some, uh, you know, it has the ability to discharge water that otherwise would flow over the spillway. But under normal operations, the water will, that gate will be closed and then the water will be spilling over the spillway itself. Um, I actually, Federal Energy Regulatory Commission has more significant drawdown requirements, I believe, than the Department of en Environmental Conservation. So, um, I, unless they're non-compliant with their federal license, <coughs> which I don't think they are, um, they, they also have a low-level outlet in their structure. Uh, it, if they're compliant with state regulations, they have a low-level outlet. And if they're not, they, they need to comply at some point and have a low-level outlet. It's unavoidable in New York State. It's unavoidable also if you're licensed under the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission for a hydro plant. Any other questions?
now it appears that this will be the only one, uh, according to your information on your website. Uh, your next board meeting, uh, which people can speak at, is in Bayview, uh, which is, as you know, quite a drive, as is today. Uh, I request that you do have that second hearing and you do have it happen at a time that is convenient for people to attend. I mean, many of us here have to take time off to work to be here. We can absolutely consider that. We, at, in, in our, our talk about once public, we thought actually we were trying to move the project along. I mean, that instead of bringing it into September, October, we talked, well, maybe we could get this buttoned up during the summer. I mean, there was nothing sinister about that. Which is fine. There was nothing sinister about that. If you hear the public. You know, we're asking for a chance to be heard. Okay. In, in Bluto. Okay. We did okay. have a meeting in Bluto. I mean, we did yes, do Yes, again, at 10 o'clock on a Tuesday. Huh. <laughs> and it was prior to having... And, and prior to having yes. this information. Okay. We're being asked to absorb this new information and immediately comment. I'll tell you what, we will certainly, we, we'll, we'll take it up in our uh, meeting and make a decision out for sure. So and we were not trying to rush any period. Sure. And, you know, sure. the, our problem, just so you know, as I alluded to, we have four board members, we have a quorum of four. We can't be, it, it's really tough for the four of us to get to a meeting. And uh, so, and if one of us can't make it, we don't have a meeting. So that's why we have a very time for a meeting. Okay. I'll take that in replacement. Well, it's just, you know, you can still discuss this at this point now. Oh, yeah, we, we will still discuss it at this meeting. So. Any other questions? You made a statement by removing the VM, it will create more wetlands than upstream, yes. It's going to drain the wetlands. Well, the areas that are dewatered. requires that the weapons be maintained or stabilized or enhanced. Just show that we have a picture here. So, I'll find it. I think that I live upstream of our Indian Conference, which is one of the largest wetland areas. And um, it comes off to the side. That would all be trained, so that would all be lost. And that's like one of the largest wetlands. Um, there's another large Drain in the, in a, and I do, when the pond goes down near the dam, you're going to lose some weapons. In some other areas you're going to gain, you know, because they're going to be flooded during high flows or, or watered, not to the extent of water now, but watered. Different times of the year because 
the river will come up. Right now, the majority of the people, even if they're flooded out, they've been flooded out before. They get by, they come up, the families come up, they redo the flood area, they break the lawn, they plant the flowers again. It is the way of life with it. And we just like to see that continue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mike. For any, any, anything else? I don't want to cut it off, but. I saw it last. We got it electronically at the end of last week, I believe. Right. Was it? Or did we? No, we didn't get it. Just recently, we didn't get it that long. Last week. Last week is when I received it. It wasn't even up this morning. No, it wasn't because it had not yet been presented. It hadn't been presented to the board yet. I mean, it'll, uh, we it'll be posted on the website, so hopefully this afternoon or tomorrow morning. Do we have the copies now, sir? Yeah. Uh, we, how many? You have 15 copies? Well, which? Do you have the, the full printouts? Give them out then. Yeah. Obviously, we're a public meeting. Everybody's welcome to stay. If you want a copy and... You know, we, we could pass it by, I guess we are going to pass it by. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to say something. No, no, no. Well, not <clears> that. Okay. Just about the process. Oh, yeah. We have a couple of people who signed up to speak. Hold on. Yeah. <coughs> yes. Yeah. Uh, I just want to recap. I think... Uh, the dam being reclassified from a B to an A is a positive. Mm -hmm. The cost of remediation being coming from 1.5 million down to 600,000 is a positive. It's not too much of a It appears to me that everything is moving in a positive direction to keep the dam. Uh, September is when your decision is made. But again, if we have to, and, and a, if the, if we want another public comment period, we don't have an August meeting. Uh, so yeah, it would be into September at that point. Well, we will have to discuss. Yeah. Our, our meetings aren't written in stone where they are. September. We can certainly can move. The meeting September right now tentatively scheduled in Loudville. <laughs> well, as I said in Lowville, or I'm sorry, in Boonville when we met, you know, this agency is in the business of running dams and not taking them out. And we were, um, well, and I think I speak for the, the residents of Hawkinsville, landowners along the river. We want the dams to stay. It is a way of life. We had a couple people who signed up to speak. Have they have, have they been heard? Yes. I mean, no. Oh, okay. Uh, Gary.
level of the reservoir of land flows out of Indian Lake and get lower and lower as the season progresses. Uh, right now, the flow is right now from Indian Lake. The water is spilling over the dam and is recovering in time on a regular basis. The radical water, uh, shutdown on Indian Lake Have you spoken to the town of Inlet about the Abenaki Dam? I, it's theirs, isn't it? Indian, yeah, Indian, 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 Indian Lake. I'm sorry, Indian Lake. my opinion. I've always been in favor of remediating the dam. And right now it looks more favorable because the, the costs have come under control. It seems to be. I have a question about the property acquisition. Is there going to be a problem with that? Anybody know? Um, Nobody knows? We, we don't know yet. We made an initial contact with uh, Black River Farm. Okay. And uh, <coughs> unfortunately the gentleman uh, who Owns Black River Farm is out of the country. Left uh, a few days ago, um, in the middle of last week, actually I believe it was. Um, but we have had contact with his representative. We're going to be forwarding off the report to that representative, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we'll have to continue those discussions via the representative for the first month or so, and uh, and then with uh, Gilbert Butler when he returns from his trip. Now, obviously, that's something the board needs to consider yeah. when it considers the remediation option in that uh, it would, as proposed, will require the use of long-term, you know, indefinite use of that proper piece of that property that's sandwiched between the state land under our jurisdiction and the state land uh, under DEC's jurisdiction by the, the parking area. Um, How much land is it? I mean, we do have Uh, acreage-wise, I'm not sure um, you can get a sense 
you know, this is a 300 foot right. spillway, and this wedge right here is the place of property. Okay. This is our land under our jurisdiction here, downstream, and a little bit upstream. And then this is DEC's jurisdiction. Okay. So, so uh, there is about. Where's the acquisition? Well, it would. That, that wedge there? That uh, depends on what what we want to do, right. mean, it depends okay. on what the board wants to do. It can either be a, um, you know, a, a, a flood easement, mm -hmm. uh, a lease, uh, it could be okay. an actual outright purchase. Got it. So, uh, so we have options. But there's, a, yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, there may be, there may be some other options that we could explore in terms of some improvements out there that would leave it in a situation that, other than just a, a mound just a that cuts there. across and, and bisects the property. Mm -hmm. uh, some things we were starting to throw around at the end of last week, and mm -hmm. and so you know, it, it might make the, the need to use the property a little bit uh, palatable to the, to the owner. <laughs> Rob, can you point that out towards the the, the audience? Just yeah, actually, you know, we'll set these up right. and folks can take a look at them if they want to a larger scale. Okay, thanks. Uh, I also have been in favor of remediation. I was waiting for the report, especially now that they see that the cost is less. Uh, I, I, I think I lean in that direction. Um, I am too. We made a comment. Okay. Um, so I think what we've got here is four board members leaning towards the remediation that you're leaning at if we were to take a vote today. Now, I don't know whether we need to know about this land acquisition before we make a final vote or. I, um, or that's certainly a step in it. Right. That's certainly a step. The, I'd like, yeah, I don't think we have to vote part, today, but uh, as long as you're aware of our. And, and I think somebody made a case that it would have been a tough everybody decision. here obviously is in favor of remediation. We probably need a little period where somebody is massively opposed. They have a voice that they can come forward. Um, you know, if it be it a, a wildlife and fisheries. I mean, I, I, I'm not anticipating anything. But if we were to rush the boat through today, I think. Uh, the fact of not having a and and you know we can set up another public. Uh, anybody have a problem changing the meeting? The, next meeting? the uh, September meeting from Loudville to Boonville meeting. Well, it would be or from July, July meeting from I'd Mayfield. Rather do the July meeting. All I'd while do the while September. this issue is potentially controversial in Boonville, we also have. You know, Sakanaga in yes. July, which is Correct. the traditional meeting that uh, people who frequent Sakanaga in the summer have an opportunity okay, to so you're right, speak you're right. to the board. It, it may not be critical to have another meeting on this issue in July. Okay, so we could, we we could do that. September, we could do that later. I, mean, I, I would um, prefer to change the September meeting, move that, because it's that's. From still Lyleville, in the, still in the Black River Boonville area, makes, yeah. makes more yeah. sense. Um, and that way, if I have any more questions, if I have any more concerns, we can address them beforehand. Right. I just don't want you to walk into a buzzsaw no. in Mayfield when live in Mayfield. they <laughs> expect we're going to hold you in front of They don't get it. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, that's why I asked. That makes sense. Uh, so what we will probably do is. Keep our July meeting uh, in Mayfield, and then move or move, move to September. Uh, but you you get a sense of where we're at. I do, and I feel that if you know the board decides between now and then that the mediation is going to go, and nobody else is coming forward. I mean, I think our group has been quite vocal since the beginning. Yeah. So I think if anybody, I I, I think the the issue is if. Uh, we need the opportunity for somebody somewhere to call a call, call, call foul. We didn't get a chance to voice our opinion because you said to look just like you did. Right. Mr. Chairman, is it possible over the next month uh, as we publish the report on the website, make it available anywhere?
anyone who needs a paper copy, put it in the town offices. The town can certainly take those copies for now. Um, if we only we, we receive comments, hypothetically, if we only receive comments over the next yep. month yes. before the July meeting in favor of remediation, and we find I there's no opposition. To I have no problem with that at all. Uh, right. it's, it's possible, though, it would kind of kill the excitement for the you know, residents to be present, but it's possible that the board can make a decision at the July meeting Always based yes. on the comments it's received right. to that point. Okay. It's made it an easier right. decision. Because the original the, figures. The permitting, have been tough. the permitting issue yeah. is going to engender an environmental review. Mm -hmm. That environmental review may compel or may not compel another public meeting. Right. Uh, it'll probably compel a coordination of uh, interested mm -hmm. entities, uh, whether that be you know, other state entities, other local entities, uh, you know, maybe uh, you, know, you, you might want to speak more to the environmental permitting side of it. But, uh, you know, we want to make sure that we've given this project, once the board has an inclination to go one way or the other, we want to make sure that we've taken a good, hard yeah. look at the environmental impacts. Obviously, the presentation uh, demonstrated part of that look. That's right. Um, but we want to make sure that we, we look at it so that the ultimate decision is ironclad mm -hmm. and somebody who has a view that has not yet been expressed here sure. can't come back you know well, eight insane. months from now and say yeah now a time out you guys got to start over mm -hmm. and you know change your focus so well these two will, will once we submit the permit applications we'll open it up to the interested parties right right right, right. So it's announced Right. Yeah. Guesstimate on time frames for permits. Six so months. So it's it's feasible. Okay. Well, I thank everybody for coming. I mean, you're welcome to stay. It's a public meeting. I'm not throwing anybody out. I wasn't. But uh, we've got our regular business to attend to, and um, at this point, we're going to take a five minute break on our meeting. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Meeting back to order. Oops. Did you start it? You got one? Yeah. Thank you. I need a motion to uh, adopt or revise. Oh, no, we did that. Uh, I need a uh, the approval of the uh, last month's board meeting. Make that motion. Second. Second. Any discussion? Corrections? I didn't see any. Uh, if not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Report of the Executive Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My report is on and contained wholly on page 22. Uh, I would just uh, hit the highlights, point out that. Uh, last month uh, uh, with the company of the general counsel we uh, attended a, a meeting with uh, DEC uh, and also Albany Engineering Corp and uh, Erie Boulevard uh, um, also uh, if, uh, met with uh, CSEA regarding collective bargaining and uh, lastly I just as a highlight attended the uh, Black River Watershed Conference uh, last week with uh, our administrator John Hodgson Oh, and lastly, I will uh, should point out that I did attend uh, continuing education uh, for my uh, to maintain my professional engineer's license. Uh, 
It's like uh, some of us have to do. So <laughs> certainly won't take any questions. Where'd you go? Las Vegas? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I went to Syracuse. It's like Las Vegas, only closer. <laughs> <laughs> only colder. <clears throat> um, any questions for Mike? Comments? No, not off the top of my head. No. Nope. Nope. Um, next on the agenda is contracts. Um, <coughs> <coughs> resolution to award the Conklinville Dam uh, third part of the safety inspection. Mr. Fulton. Thank you. You should have a one page memorandum for me dated the, the 2nd of June. Uh, we, we have discussed this previously, um, the board meeting concerning the need to acquire a consultant. Independent consultant is necessary for the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission independent safety inspection that occurs every five years. consistent with the state procurement guidelines in section 136A, finance law. We requested annual statements of qualifications this year from engineering firms, uh, engineering survey, architectural firms, uh, for the purposes of completing uh, tasks similar to those that we've had and related to the structures that we maintain. Those qualifications are maintained in file. From those qualifications, we draw out the most highly qualified firms to make a selection after reviewing, uh, in, in this particular case, a, a set of six of the most highly qualified firms uh, from those who had submitted annual statement of qualifications. We, the team, uh, evaluation team itself, uh, came to the conclusion uh, of who should uh, who, or who is the highest qualified respondent for completion of the FERC Part 12 Independent Consultant Safety Inspection. Upon that evaluation, the evaluation de team determined that GEI Consultants is the highest qualified firm for the project, and the team recommends conditionally awarding the work to GEI Consultants. And this district staff also seeks board acceptance of the evaluation team recommendation and authorization to request the scope of work and to negotiate a contract at a fee which is fair and reasonable to the regulating district subject to board approval from GEI. We have a resolution, I believe, Mr. Should be Resolutions on page 24. Yep. Make that motion. Mr. Bergstress. The second. No, we, we don't have any cost to this. We'll Mr. Hayes. This. No, this we will be. That's why I've included um, subject to the subject to board approval right. portion of the fair and reasonable price. We will negotiate. We'll get the fee, the, the scope of work, and the fee proposal yeah. from them. Okay. We will bring it back bring to it the down. board so we'll as we have traditionally. Process. Yes. Yeah. Um, any other discussion? No. That was no. We have a motion on the table. Uh, all in favor? Say aye. 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 Any opposed? Next. Resolution to amend HDR proposal for Stillwater Dam breach analysis. Also, thank you. In May 2013, the board accepted a scope and fee proposal from Henningsen Durham <coughs> Richardson Architectural uh, HDR to complete Stillwater a Stillwater Dam breach analysis. That contract went through several iterations and review. Um, it didn't receive approval because of certain missing uh, supporting documentation approval from OSC and uh, it forced the return of the contract last fall and again again in March 2014 uh, it was uh, basically information that HDR had to supply to us uh, that they were slow in supplying and then was not appropriate for OSC review now it's yeah. going to cost us another thousand dollars. So, yeah. as a result of that, yep. As a result of that, the um, we had to ask HDR to resubmit their whole proposal to us because of the the delay. 
and uh, the, the fee is now $28,000, which is an increase of $1,025 over the 2013 proposal price. Um, the memorandum from 2013 is attached. Uh, the proposal in terms of scope has not changed. The, the difference is just the incremental cost with the change in fees from last year to this year. The uh, staff recommends acceptance of HDR's May 23rd proposal uh, to provide breach analysis for the Stillwater Reservoir, seeks board authorization to form the contract, and authorization for the executive director to execute an agreement in the amount of $28,000. Any questions? I would just add one other thing. In terms of the delay, I would say the delay was also on the Office of the State Control. This was not just HDR. Not just delay. HDR. By, uh, and a, I'm not going to put a percentage on it, but in this case, it did take two to tango. So it was. But it still cost us another thousand twenty-five dollars. Right. Right. Yes. Bottom line is right. But again, it wasn't just HDR dragging their feet on providing information. A lot of it was is OSC reviewing it to even give us a heads up mm -hmm. that there was an issue with the information provided. We have a motion. Just, just to clarify. Oh, I'm sorry. Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion. Mr. Yeah. Stover. I'll be grudgingly second it. Mr. <laughs> Any further discussion? No. Anybody? If not, uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? <clears throat> Third, uh, resolution to award <clears throat> the insurance program, Mr. Farrar. Mr. Chairman. That was the resolution that did not have the uh, recommendation of Compass, so I will update the board on that. On page 39 is my memo to refresh our memories. Back in uh, July 22nd, 2013, uh, we engaged Compass Company, uh, and specifically Patricia McCarthy, to perform a formal solicitation for the district's commercial insurance. It is something the district has done historically on a three-year basis. We got a little off cycle, so this brings us right back uh, on cycle. Um, just a couple of uh, revisions. The issuance of the request for proposals went to, uh, in fact, eight uh, companies, not six. And of those eight, uh, no change, only two submitted proposals. Uh, the two were Wells Fargo and the incumbent Cool Insuring Agency. And I provided the board electronically the recommendation. I provided the board with a paper copy of that recommendation. And for Compass, the recommendation was quite simple. Uh, for the reason stated uh, in the recommendation, Wells Fargo didn't even bid damn failure. <coughs> They were concerned yeah. about the what they considered timeliness and status of inspections, which, again, uh, these inspections were up to date. We explained this, mm -hmm. but uh, their underwriter just obviously didn't have a comfort level, so uh, the decision on campus was simple. <laughs> there was only one, one bidder who provided full insurance to include damn failure. Isn't that kind of like having car insurance that doesn't insure the car? Uh, uh, it's... it's uh, yeah. And the dollar amount um, is a hundred and eighty six thousand seven seventeen fourteen. But the first resolution we're gonna deal with is the awarding of the program. So based on Compass's recommendation, which I concur with, uh, the resolution resolution on page forty uh, would have the board review and approve if uh, the a resolution to award the regulating districts program. Uh, for insurance for the policy years beginning this July uh, and then ending June 30th, 2017. The last three policy years would be option years, but historically we've gone with those options unless there's mm -hmm. some change. Some, sometimes insurance or underwriter pulls out and we're forced to go out again. But, okay. So this okay. resolution is for the board. Any questions? If not, a motion. 
How's that compared to last year's? Uh, the, and actually it was in, Do you have it? it was oh, 30, it yeah, so I got it. Okay. So nice. it's a little bit because we, part of. I expected a little. Right. So it was a little higher, even the number in there before cools a little higher because we're taking the $2,500 recommendation that Compass made for the boiler and other coverage, mm -hmm. which they say is something we should do. Okay. So we've accepted that, so we've jumped it up $2,500. Okay, thanks. Uh, did I get that? I need a motion. Mr. Stover. A second. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor, say aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? And finally. And the second resolution would be for this policy year that uh, cool insuring was awarded uh, the insurance program, and this resolution would authorize uh, the, a premium amount for the fiscal year July 1, 2014 through June 30, 2015. In the amount of one hundred eighty-six thousand seven seventeen and fourteen cents, Mr. Chairman. Motion. So moved. Mr. Hayes. No second. Mr. Stover. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> committee reports. Report of the Finance Committee. Well, we had uh, resolutions to adopt the Black River area, the Hudson River area, and the state share annual assessments for July 1st, 2014 through June 30, 2015. And I recommend that the, we send this, the board consider this and uh, approve it. Okay. Further discussion? No. Nope. Motion. Make a motion on the Black River side assessment. Mr. Burks, A second. Mr. Hayes. All right. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? A motion on the Hudson River assessment. Make a motion on the Hudson River assessment. Burks, A second. Mr. Stover. Further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 And I finally need a motion on the state chair. So moved. Mr. Hayes. I'll second it. Mr. Burks, <laughs> No more discussion. Is there any more discussion? If not, <laughs> all in favor say aye. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Ta da. Um, okay. Um, General Council. Council's report. Yeah. Um, I, uh, next, next is the General Council's report, Mr. Uh I would note that, uh, as, as Mike had said, uh, myself and he are working with the EC to address the concerns raised by Albany Engineering uh, and to determine uh, if any action on our part is necessary to avert a citizen suit. Uh, second, I'll note that the Attorney General is still awaiting uh, Erie Boulevard Hydropower's answer to our affirmative suit in the USDC for the NDNY, which is the United States District Court for the Northern District of New York. Uh, we've opened or reopened a dialogue with Jefferson County regarding the class collection of past due assessments. Uh, that's a positive development. Um, I also uh, did a bunch of CLE this month, uh, not getting to travel as far as Syracuse. I sat at my desk and labored through hours of online video stuff. Uh, anyway, short report. Uh, anything you, any questions? I'm certainly available. What exactly might be our involvement in that civil suit, the citizen suit? Curious. That well, doesn't exist yet. It yeah, it doesn't exist. exist yet. We could be a litigant. Okay. Uh, if we are sued, um, one of the best ways to avert liability is to enter into a, a consent order or be subject to, uh, a, the word escapes me, but uh, be subject to an enforcement action uh, by DEC. See, Basically, the, 
the claim will be that there is a violation of state law or regulation or federal law, <coughs> which constitutes a violation of the Clean Water Act. Mm -hmm. The citizen supervision under the Clean Water Act provides, obviously, a citizen to bring a suit to compel a governmental agency or some other entity to remediate or cease and desist from violating the Clean Water Act. Because DEC is a delegated program under the Clean Water Act, uh, or water is a delegated program delegated to DEC from the federal government under the Clean Water Act, DEC can bring an enforcement action to preclude the uh, well, they bring an enforcement action to to show what steps are necessary for the governmental entity or the private entity to uh, cease and desist or remediate the violation. Okay. Once they've done that, that precludes the citizen suit from moving forward. If no action is taken by DEC, the citizen suit proceeds in the U.S. District Court. Mm -hmm. uh, in our case, that would be the Northern District of New York, cited in all. Um, and then we'd be subject to whatever penalty structure there is under the Clean Water Act. Uh, depending on what they allege, the penalties could be thousands of dollars a day to tens or more per day. And this all revolves around water release, right? This basically revolves around water release. Is our, is our water release based, is it hourly, daily? Water, uh, river flow, right? Is what we... Yeah, the we uh, timing story. of the release is subject to uh, Brookfield, Erie Boulevard at EJ West. Mm -hmm. We uh, prescribe a daily average okay. consistent with the offer of settlement requirements. As far as it's a daily release, not a... Uh, uh, well, the offer of settlement requires that a, a, a daily average flow okay. be produced as measured downstream mm -hmm. at, at Stewart's Bridge and at Hadley in the Hudson River. The timing of those releases and whether it comes in a continuous or a block uh, is subject to Brookfield's license and, and the, you know, the, oh, really? the requirements of their operation okay. of the facility. Yeah. All right. And the offer of settlement. Right. Okay, thanks. And when we release the water, there's a huge difference in the rate I learned. That's right. Huge. Mm -hmm. Right. Thank you. Any, any, any other questions? Okay, hey, uh, Chief Fiscal Officer, Mr. Ferraro. Mr. Chairman, my report begins on page 43. I'll basically focus on the financial highlights. As of the close of fiscal May 31st, 2014, which brings us 11 months through the 12 months of our fiscal year, uh, fund balances are fairly healthy at 752000 and change in the Hunter River area and 487000 in the black. Uh, as always, the financials and cash flows are attached for your review. Um, because we're a month away from basically the end of the fiscal year, uh, I had our my first conference call with Richard Levy Chin, who is the principal at KBL, the audit firm we've engaged to do our uh, upcoming fiscal year and independent audit. Uh, we have tentatively agreed on the week of August 18th to do the engagement, the field work in Albany. Uh, we'll probably firm that up and finalize it this week. Um, again, because they're a new audit firm, we'll be jumping through hoops we haven't jumped through in the last five years with Bonadio, and that's to be expected. Um, on page not 44, which is written so tiny I can barely read it, uh, right now, through 11 months, the total expenses to date are there's a variance that I just wanted to bring to the board's attention on the Black River side, uh, which is a good variance. We're only 80% of expenses through 11 months, primarily payroll, mm -hmm. uh, which is, is 
what it is. And on the Hutcher River area side, we're 96.2 percent. So pretty much where we should be at this time of year. And that's my brief report. If uh, the board has any questions, um, no. I'm happy to answer them. Any questions? No. No, I have none. Good luck with the audit. Thank you. <clears throat> if not, um, the uh, Chief Engineer's report. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My report begins at page 97. We had some rain. The reservoirs were came up and were fairly high in over the last month, but uh, we are on target as of today. Stillwater, Six Lake, Old Forge, and uh, only a, about a quarter of a foot above at GSL, above the target, and a quarter, about a quarter of a foot below the target at Indian Lake. So things are, I say, set pretty well for our our, our summer slow draw at all, all of our facilities, uh, with the exception of Old Forge and Six Lake. And where we will maintain those elevations throughout the summer. But uh, I think it's safe to say we've, we've survived quite, quite well the spring runoff and series of rainstorms that followed uh, and uh, well, well underway in the typical summer operation now. Uh, everything else is uh, running, also running smoothly. So. Uh, are there any questions? I'd be glad to take them. Otherwise, Gary said they're running the app that had a run deck challenge again. Yeah, they are. Yeah, well, Mike, uh, I think, has some information on that. They are considering it. I've not heard it, that it okay. was actually confirmed yet. I Same don't place. know who's involved or what, but I do know that it's going to be the full shot uh, as far as the run of river. Uh, last year, a lot of it just went the, the stretch of Indian River and they put out or took out by the confluence and this year I guess they're looking at going all the way to North River down oh really you know on your way to North Creek more at below the gorge um, uh, dates are similar to July 20th and is that what it was 21st of this well next month yeah. okay uh, report of the Hudson River and Black River Administrator. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My report starts on page 131. I'll keep it short and sweet. Uh, operations in both areas are normal. Everything's good. Uh, staff seems to be real busy with lawn care and keeping our dams nice and neat. And they get done with one, move to the next, and by the time they're done with, with those, they're back uh, to the first one again. Mo. It's growing so fast. Hutchin River area also, is, uh, people are coming up. As we all know that the lake and encroachment and uh, work permits are uh, <laughs> coming in rapidly. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, I'll be glad to take any questions that you may have. Any questions? Yeah, you're probably using the same phrase we use here. They're back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, any other board member questions or comments? The resolution for our next board meeting, which is it's in Mayfield, July, Mayfield, July, July, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday, July, Tuesday, Tuesday, July, in Mayfield, in Mayfield. In Mayfield. I'll make that motion that we meet in Mayfield on July 8th. Mr. Birchfield, <laughs> Mr. Stover, I'm going to sit you down here next time, Albert, then you can get in. <laughs> need, a, need a motion to go to executive session? Did you vote on that? Hold on. All in favor. Oh. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Yep. And a motion to go into executive session. To discuss. And we, we, we're going to discuss personnel issues. Uh, we plan to have a vote when okay. we come out. What are we just Person, personnel, no, personnel issues? Oh, CSCA collective bargaining. Collective bargaining. Collective bargaining. Personnel. Yeah. That doesn't. Uh, okay. It's collective bargaining. Yeah. To me, that was okay. Collective bargaining, and uh, our plan is to have a vote when we come out. So we so will conduct business when we come out. We will conduct business. Conduct business when we come out. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? We, uh, well, I'll make the motion. Ms. Birchester made the motion. Mr. Stover said. I think mean, that was personal. I guess it is. No, it's uh, personal. We have a problem. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. That's kind of awesome. okay. 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 I need a motion to come out of executive session. Can I make that motion? Second. Uh, in favor? Aye. There's three of us. Unfortunately. Um, 
all of a sudden we are in the middle of discussing uh, uh, CSEA contract and Dave Bergstresser got a call, he had a family emergency and uh, boy we wanted to get this behind us but unfortunately we now don't have a quorum to vote on that. Um, our apologies and we will take it up next, next meeting. Um, I don't know what else to say. I, uh, we were hoping to get this done. Uh, with that, I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you.